Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and this is going to be another very very long video so only start watching it when you can really sit down and, and watch it all the way. If you are hoping to see crazy subwoofer excursion and, and fancy marketing and all that then skip away, this is not the video for you. However, if you want to see the in-depth content why this front subwoofer enclosure had to be built if you want to see measurements and explanation of the whole fabrication then this is the video for you so stay tuned because this is really going to be another long one so before i went ahead and started to do the front sub enclosure i spent several hours to test around to see how the mid bass performance is affected if i flip the Focal driver upside down so we technically give more airspace underneath the driver in that outlet the BMW platforms have and what change that could bring. Then we tried a pair of ESB ESB underseat drivers which are not cheap um, they are meant to be one of the best BMW plug and play options I had a pair of them I wanted to try for a while and now I had the, the chance so I put those in um, and we measured uh, all the options plus uh, I did test how the uh, car actually has effect on the response so you will see from the following five minutes um, what those measurement results were and these were the actual uh, footage that I sent to the owner so we could also see what was happening and I suggested that there's no point to spend several days on trying to recreate a different way of mounting the driver underneath the seat and expecting magic. I don't push people into spending money on things that makes no sense, rather use it for things that actually solves the problem and makes sense. So I offered the option to him to go with the front sub, yes it comes with the sacrifice and then following day we managed to find a sub i got it and i went ahead so that's what now you are going to see how the fabrication part happened and then at the end you will see the final test and measurement results and how the whole system you know just came together okay so ne next test um orange is left base driver no eq in uh, no uh, high pass filter, only a 400 hertz low pass filter. So it plays all the way down. Green is driver side because driver side is closer to you. You definitely have less cabin gain because you have less distance for the wave to develop. From the other side, you always get more level, as you see. But just when I, you know, when I measured it first, the problem is still there. It's the same situation, and it's good up to that 170 point when the mids take over. So, I had few tests. So that's the normal scenario. Then, I tip the seat all the way back so it's not above the driver. And then I measured it from the back so I wasn't even, you know, the seat was tipped, I wasn't sitting in it. So, there's not much difference actually happening. Uh, there's a bit of drop here where actually we need it. And there's a bit more above 170. But effectively over there, nothing changes then i open the boot to see what happens then because normally it's car size related i open the boot and yes the low end you know comes alive under 30 hertz which is quite normal it plays all the way down Woo, pretty crazy um but again that's not affected then i drop the left window the front left window then we get a bit more level straight away because the space is not enclosed. Then I dropped uh, both left windows and we get even more level. Overall, we gained 55 and a half and over there, you know, nearly 64 and a half dB, but over here, 53 and a half, 58 and a half, 5 dB, just simply by opening the windows on the other side. So the wave has a better chance to develop in, in this small cabin well it's not small but considering the ba the base wavelength 100 hertz is 3.4 meter 50 hertz is double 6.8 meter so we definitely get more base but again that area is not really affected 
I did the same with the driver side window. <laughs> yep, that, that was driver side both window and then actually we lose quite a lot on this side which is again normal once you pull the driver side window up you get a bit more base where you sit okay so then i reverse the driver underneath me which is the actual case and there's not much happening again there's a bit more level there from 140 up to 170 but nothing changes there where we would need it and this way you get around the same airspace if i raise the driver facing up and if it was mounted all the way up to the carpet now the driver is, is reversed we have probably 10 mil clearance from the uh, from the seat and underneath it it's now completely free in that manifold but again nothing changes there and i suspect whatever we do whatever we rebuild underneath nothing is going to change there it's just the location and the size of the car which is not in our favor but last thing i'm going to drop in the esb drivers all right so the esb driver is in i take the reversed out so the blue is the esb and the green is the original focal <coughs> facing up so as we see actually the esb has less output on the 60 down to 35 ish because over there that is nearly 52 and the focal is 56 so actually that's a good 4 db and i think they are both 4 ohm um dip same way there that's the only difference that in that 125 up to 155 it doesn't have such dip but the rest is the same so as i thought it's, it's the car dictating the location and um even if we build a i don't even know how it would be build a box as i looked at it we wouldn't be able to gain more than one one and a half liter or so but by then that's not going to change nothing At least I tried everything now. That's your biggest problem. As I told you, the only solution I can imagine, and I said it, even during the process of doing everything, probably even before we started everything, um, to cross the mid base underneath the seat at 80, 90, over there, before that problem, because it's kind of functional between 80 and 170, and then have the front sub feel the rest over there to get proper musical bass up front because I don't want to you know spend two three days building something underneath the, the seats and then it's, it's not going to make a difference it's it's not the effective way of doing it I don't think so it's up to you I think you will only see this video tomorrow but tomorrow morning yeah drop me a call all right, so up front sub in the BMW 6 GT. Um, I started with that tape, as you can see, that was lined around the floor mat. I wanted to leave clearance cutting away uh, from that line. So in case we have to put the original piece that I cut out, we have to put that back, then the, the cut is gonna be underneath the floor mat so it won't be seen um, yes we will have to do a bit of a trick to to make it like it's a nice joint um, but if it's under the floor mat then it's gonna be less of an issue hence the the tape line up that way um, on the floor I made a straight line which line was measured from this line to keep it straight and parallel so it's not wonky and then the whole floor mat was chopped out which had around four inch thickness here and there let me show you so like here you know it's nearly four inches overall three around three three and four ish that's how thick insulation they 
they put there also to to keep the footrest in level because that is quite funky in there so that's how much space we can actually gain yes it's drastic not many people want to cut the carpet but when you want to maintain enough legroom for the passenger then i think this is crucial otherwise you build away from the carpet and then you know you come further into the cabin um in some of the old cars like in old mercedes they had so much space and some some of the old bmws as well they had so much space in the legroom going even further out that you can easily put in you know like a, an eight inch deep enclosure without any struggle and the front passenger still had you know legroom um not in this one it's not as deep but this way we will have enough space so i measured the at the angle of the original uh, floor as well so we maintained the angle so when I build it back which was around there so that's how much we lose but if we keep the same angle then the passenger will be able to rest the legs on the sub enclosure obviously there will be a rigid uh, panel in front of the sub leaving clearance for the excursion and uh, strong enough so if someone stands on it then it's not gonna you know uh, damage the driver and we'll possibly be carpeted over so no dust and crap will go over it but the original floor mat will sit onto it anyway so the plan is to the time it's finished it should look pretty factory um, so now the task is to mask the whole area out and as I can see, this car was, the platform is, is kind of universal for left-hand driven and right-hand driven, because I believe that is for the accelerator. The bracket is there. And it looks like they also had that big black yellow grommet that should have, should have been for the steering wheel column going through. So, yeah, I could, I could take the bracket out actually. I may ask the owner whether I, I can get rid of that because no one is going to ever see that really but that could give us more space um so yeah this is this is what's happening let's mask this out when people see me using my usual puzzle technique from plywood and they they are many people not not everyone but many people always want to argue that you know this is way too uh, faffy and it takes longer, fiberglassing is way quicker, um, no it's not and this is the point when people have to realize that preparation takes long time, whatever masking solution you use, some people may have something very simple that they can protect the whole car and they can get the mold quick but for me it just it doesn't work that quick, if you have any good ideas go for it. I always try to use different things at the moment I used uh, this uh, foil which has a bit of adhesive back um, you know normally they use it for um, uh, carpet protection painters use it so I laid that down first so it you know it sticks to things pretty well uh, so that's two layers at the bottom and then I have masking tape or this packing tape uh, on the top as you see it goes all in there I could two three layers minimum everywhere and because you are in such an awkward position um, I asked my missus to take a few pictures so now you can see what it's like to be upside down and, and twisted out if, if if your physicals are you know not great um, yeah be prepared this is not a joyful thing to be upside down you can definitely feel it the same evening and the following day um, I don't have to go to the gym I do not feel good in, in this job uh, so you know this took a couple of hours to prep it properly um, you can see that I have a tracing line with Sharpie for what I use my angle so I have my angle copied onto the tape because once you apply the resin, that, that Sharpie line is gonna bond into it. So when you take the mold out, you will see that tracing line. Then you know where you have to trim it back to, you know where you have to build the, the front buffer up to. 
so that's definitely helpful just make sure that the the uh, sharpie is a different color than what resin you use because otherwise you won't see it obviously um, reds can be cool even better possibly so now yeah i start pre preparing the the chop mat um resin and then just do the the most beautiful job i hate the most so the first layer i'm using uh, a woven mat it's pretty pretty thick i think it's like 600 gram per square meter and um little tip just so it lays nicely you can see i have those black lines in there so when first i had the square piece put in place obviously where you have creases it builds up so i just made a line there i slit it cut it and then when you put it back then it nicely um, overlaps just like that everywhere and then the extra pieces will come in once once that is covered with resin um, before I put this in place I applied a bit of um, before before I put that in I applied a bit of um, before I put that in place I applied a bit of wax on the surface as release agent there are many different alternatives you can you can find it easily um, but um, wax seems to work for me pretty well you know allow a few minutes to dry and then after that once you have to pull the whole thing out it will come out easier however I'm, I'm working against releasing it easily on the top because once you start to work on something upside down obviously it would fall back down um, so I used adhesive spray on on the mat and on the surface just to bond that top section there so it stays there when it has to come out it will come out with with the tape and everything but um, if it only sticks up there then it's, it's easier than if it sticks everywhere I don't really worry too much about release agents um, many people who do fiberglossing all the time I'm sure they are experts of it um, they wouldn't work without it because sometimes it can be really tricky to pull the mold out but um, this is not such a wide surface area um, so this is in place resin comes I put the sides in and then it can it can rest for a while before I pull it out okay so dual 18 mil uh, ply rings were bonded together glued together and these rings will be set below the buffle so the buffle will be another 18 mil um, by then we will have 36 mil clearance uh, from from the bottom to the top so we should have 11 millimeter away from the surround this way it will have enough clearance for excursion so put another layer on the top that will be the depth but I don't I didn't want to set the bomb as the buffer height because then we lose airspace as well as this would be more intrusive I want to keep the buffer as the top layer because on the top of that we will have the grill and the, the, the trim piece covering everything um, if we'll get a oh, it's pretty heavy if we get a small 45 on the back just to chop it off a bit for better airflow for the sub because the basket is not allowing too much airspace as you see it's probably less than an inch so everything counts yes although it has probably like six seven mil lip so i can put the 45 up to that level and then have the 45 underneath so it has better flow so in here um it's it's getting set pretty well but i'm gonna leave it for tonight and uh probably apply just a little bit more to it tomorrow morning before i pull it out some parts are pretty rigid 
but then this bottom piece is only one layer just to make sure when I pull it out it doesn't deform or anything I just give it a bit more but it's not the best uh, technique to go all with all layers straight away because uh, before you have a hard surface um, you can't push the resin through the layers of chopped mats and you will have air gaps um, once you have a hard surface because now I, this is pretty hard uh, before that you know the the tape is not given uh, enough rigidity somewhere you you don't have um, the tape sitting straight away onto the floor and then you would push through it or you would just wouldn't apply the layers on the top of each other correctly and you would have air bubbles um, and layers wouldn't sit on, on the top of each other perfectly um, so now this is hard enough I can carry on apply the layers um, it will need at least a good 8 10 mil uh, some people would build up to, to even more than half an inch like 12 mil um, the shape gives it extra strength but I know what shops normally do they just go for like few layers it's good enough that's it they may pull milk shake in it and job done that's not me I want it rigid I want it solid um, I don't cut corners on that. Yes, it takes more time to build up the layers this way properly, but it is what it is. There are certain things I, I don't want to cut corners on. Well, I never want to cut corners. Um, so here we go with, with the ring. So this is going to be below the buffle. And I'll push it more towards the center of the car. So we will have a better chance to uh, make sure that you can't locate it that much off-centered if it was in the middle or further out then you know you would really notice that it's just only coming from one side but if we can push it towards the middle we have a slightly better chance uh, it would have been great if I could face it forward against the firewall but then we don't have enough depth for the driver and get the right angle for the feet for the uh, footrest um, so we are staying facing forward that way then we have enough depth for the magnet we should have enough airspace too looking at it now and actually I could have actually fitted the 13 in GR here too without any issue if we have just fitted and that's even shallower than this 10 inch focal um, so that's for tomorrow all right, so the mold came out. Instead of adding more layers inside of the car, I pulled it out. It's holding its shape pretty well, although the whole tape and everything was coming with it, but it was really easy to take it out of it. So that's what it looks like. You can see that the Sharpie line transferred onto the mold all around. So now I can trim it back. Just try in the car again, so it comes in and out easy. Cause like that top corner, it doesn't have to go that far because I can see it will be cut off but if it was like this it wouldn't tip in because um, it would reach the top and the bone wouldn't sit down because it has quite a dip to go down so it's always worth to try how it comes in and out before you carry on and, and build building it too far and then oopsie you know it doesn't work um, but overall yeah easy now I just have to build up the layers to make it strong so I added around four layers of this woven mat, which is pretty thick. And then there's another three layers of, of chopped mat on the top of it. So that's gonna be pretty good, pretty rigid. Um, I'm gonna trim the edges back all the way, um, apply deadening on top of this, just to add, you know, something a bit more to it to make it even more dead against vibrations and then I can do the buffer. I dropped the mold on a three quarter inch or 18 mil plywood board um, and just traced the, the shape around with the Sharpie. So the plan is, whoa, as you can see, I apply that in it as well. Um, I'm gonna cut it out because I want to bond that frame first into it all around because if if people put a, a buffle on, on, on the front face, they can't really get in, into the inside edges to bond it properly. They just bond it from the outside and it's not rigid enough. So I'm just making a frame 
all around so I can easily get in with fiber filler. That's why I left that area over there uh, untouched and then I can fill it properly. And also, because this way with the frame, you can see, well, it's gonna be cut out all the way like that. But here it's following the, the mounting ring that I can put in place and determine what distance I need from the bottom to get enough clearance for the magnet and enough breathing as well. Um, otherwise, it's a bit difficult to estimate it. If it was for a trunk, you could easily put this in here, you know, staple it around with, with fleece, fiberglass, it's chopped done. Um, but at the front, it has to be flat all the way from the buffer wall has to be flat. The sub has to have enough clearance for excursion. So it needs a bit, a bit, a little bit more thinking to make sure that everything is just right. So cut this one out and then put it in place to see what it's like. I positioned the ring to that side. As I explained earlier, I wanted to have it closer to the center of the car. So I just bonded the ring in temporarily to make sure that we have enough clearance. And if you can see, if it wants to focus there, that's probably like five, six mil between the edge of the magnet and the surface. But there's enough clearance underneath the magnet for airflow. So probably one, one and a half inch all around. So that should do. So now the frame is in place. I can bond that in. Oops, oh, the zoom works well on the phone. Um, I can bond this in uh, all around outside and inside as well. And that's gonna keep the platform for the top buffer. Um, it's gonna sit on the top of the ring and the frame because that's gonna give me enough clearance for excursion. Because now it's a 118 mm layer further down but as you see, it's still not enough for the surround. So by the time I have another 18 mil, that will give enough clearance so that I can have the front panel, the protective grill panel in front of it. It's looking pretty good. Put it back into the car just to make sure that the distance from that line on both ends is the same. And yes, it's nice that, you know, you test it on the bench, you check the clearance for the magnet and everything. And oopsie, the distance here wasn't the same. That was one centimeter, 10 mil difference. This end was further out and you could see that the, the buffer is on the right angle, but it was a bit like that. So needed readjusting. So that's the good thing. I only had the hot glue just temporarily holding everything. Um, and I had to push it further in. So now, I have it in level, the wanted distance and everything. So yeah, let's bond it in. First, I, I taped the gap all around from the outside so I could feel it, feel it from the inside. As you can see, I went in all around. As I was pushing the filler, it was filling the gap coming into it um, and to prevent it to flow out and then, you know, come all the way out. I had the tape on, I let that set quickly, then I pulled the tape off and then where I were, the filler didn't come through enough. Um, I filled it from the outside too. So now it's definitely bonded in properly. And then this is gonna give a beautiful platform for the front buffer. Sit on, I'm gonna, you know, glue it, nail it together with it. Um, put this one in place as well, bonded it together and nailed it all around. So it's, it's showing a pretty good shape. Um, and this is it for today. Now I'm at 15 hours with it, just so people have an idea about how long this thing can take. And then tomorrow I have to put it in the car, fill it up this level, this layer, to the shape of the interior on the sides all around before I put the front buffer on. Because what I'm gonna fill it up to, that's gonna be the tracing line now for the front buffer. You will see why. And um, 
then again I have to do that that's after the, the front buffer or fill it up again to make it sit in the car nice and you know firm. I must dial the area again before I put the enclosure back in place because now I filled up the gaps all around to the exact shape of the interior because when you take the mold and you do the taping depending on how you do the masking and the protection and everything it may not be as accurate so i use this as a base line um, this doesn't stick to the surface perfectly and it's not as exact so that's why i have to fill it back up so it firmly sits in now um, before i take this one out again and i'm going to copy it to another layer of plywood and then i can have the front buffle so it came out, it was sanded back um, and then flipped over to the board, copied over so I cut the, the main buffle out. I determined the cutout diameter roughly because it's going to be flushed over from that with the router. But I determined this so I know where I can nail and screw this together with the wooden frame. You can see I have glue applied on it so now I can go on and then become one. Buffle is now glued and screwed, nailed, everything bonded together. I just filled the screw heads a bit. I made a big hole, so I can put it through the flush bit now that's gonna ride along the, um, the ring inside. So let's make noise. After the hole was cut out, it was put back into the car again mossed out again and filled up again so now it's sitting in proper nice tight so as you see now that's three layers three layers of 18 mil or three quarters of an inch but from here actually the mounting area looks thinner because i put 30 degree chamfer on it for better airflow i just have to fit the inserts for the driver so we can use meshing bolts and then it's pretty much done. I just have to uh, put the speaker cables through probably somewhere on the top where I can tuck it away, which will probably have XD connectors. So it's easy to disconnect it, tuck it away. And then I can do the front protective um, grill, fascia, whatever, whatever we can call it. As most of you know, uh, I love this exercise. Somehow, I just don't want to do any other way to test the volume in the enclosure. People always, you know, tell me that Pete, you should fill it up with this or that. It's not as messy like dealing with water. But the big advantage of using water, uh, checking the volume of an enclosure is to make sure that it's also airtight. Because if there's no water flowing out of it, it means there's no air escaping either. So, I'm gonna fill it up now and we will see what we can put into it. Before I do it, guess, guess how many liters I can I can get out of it. Just just come up with, with a number. You can even type it in the description. I'm interested what you think about it. Um, I'm saying 13, 14, we will see. So this uh, bucket has 10 liter of water and that has six. At least it was easy because they have measuring levels inside, so. Okay, let's put a 10 liter in it. Okay, no. Well, that's definitely in. Let's come with the other one. I'm gonna pour it till the edge of the buffle because actually over here the buffle comes higher where we don't necessarily have much probably like 0.3 or 4 liter but now I'm all the way up to that level and we have well, I don't know whether you can see that that's probably a little bit more than half a liter less than one liter so then 15 point something 
that's that's pretty good. Um, Focal also says that. To be fair, I don't care what manufacturers say about what enclosure size a subwoofer requires. I always like to model it. In this case, I didn't. And to be fair, there's not much you can do. You always have to build the enclosure as big as big as possible, um, because it can never be too big, really, especially in custom solutions like this. So happy news. And not a single drop anywhere. Awesome. That's that's all I wanted. You know, it has definitely uh, enough airspace, airtight as well already. So wicked. By the way, I, I wouldn't do this water job if this enclosure was built from MDF, but. It's quite rare now, nowadays I, I get anything from MDF other than trim panels, um, because MDF can soak water and it expands, it falls apart, it's awful. Um, whereas plywood is water resistant, well, if it's proper plywood. So water was poured out, you can see it's nearly dry and it's 20 minutes later, uh, and I just had to get the rest out, out with, with towel. So it was that easy. I fitted a gland down there or glued it in this type of stuff which has a rubber seal in it so once you push the speaker cable through you can tighten it up from the inside and then it seals around the speaker cable but just to make sure that it's proper sealed I'm gonna just stick more hot glue into it as well around the speaker cable then it's it's not gonna leak at all um, Tomorrow I have to solder XT connectors. This is the XT60. To be fair, this, this thicker cable, four square mil, uh, should have the XT90, which can take that thickness, uh, but it's pretty tight around the mold where the enclosure goes in. So with two of these, I would possibly have slight issue how to squeeze these plugs away without having tolerance issues. Um, so I'm gonna use a smaller one. I can solder it in. And, um, and then these will hang out just in a short, short cable where it can be disconnected easily and safely. Um, and I need a pair because the sub is dual voice call and then this way we can run two cables all the way to the back and then I can configure it on the amplifiers whichever way I want. So yeah, that's a job for tomorrow. I'm gonna to leave it here because now an extra seven hours went into it. We are at 22 hours with this enclosure. Normally it takes three days to be fair. And yeah, it could be completed in three days, but then it has to be fitted in the car. The speaker wires have to be running in and especially in this car, that's not a simple task. The, the whole rear section has to come out the rear seats. Um, the rear panel, all the panels on the side. So it's, it's quite fluffy. That's gonna take a while. And um, I have to trim this as well. Plus create the protective front face. So yeah, tomorrow evening it should play and it should be in the car completed. Connections have been done. So safe and easy connection type. And I will just have to tuck it away somehow when the enclosure goes in. Um, it's been trimmed, as you see. I use Alcantara because we have the same material on the A pillar and the C panels. And this is the only color that's closest to the OEM color in the car. Um, I mean, the carpet. But the floor mat is going to be above it. And, and hardly anything is going to be seen from the enclosure, but we're very seen, then we don't want it to pop. And it gives it a quite luxurious look. Um, I added closer foam as um, a gasket when the, when the subwoofer is bolted in with the machine bolts. We have this paid um, creamed onto the Speaker cable, I don't particularly like it, but I don't want to solder onto the terminal of the subwoofer. And to be fair, that there's no problem with it. Once it, it clicks on firmly, it's fine. Most people always say that, oh, creams are bullshit, you know, it's not good enough. 
But think about all the connections in your car. There's not a single soldering in your car. Why? Because solder can fail um, and, and can crack. Whereas this is just good enough. Um, so the enclosure has been carpeted around the back. So when it goes in, it's soft. It's not um, hitting anything. I'm gonna have big Velcro uh, on the floor. Normally I would bolt it in, but um, we didn't really see any area where we could safely drill a hole and fit a, a rib nut so we could bolt to. So I'm gonna just Velcro the bugger in um, because anyway, it can't go anywhere. It, it slots in so firmly that it, it doesn't move. It, it taken out actually is pretty difficult. Um, so now I have to modify the uh, OEM light underneath the glove box because now it's kind of right above the edge so the light doesn't do anything. I have to bring it further out. Then it can go in and then it's ready for boom boom. All right, so we are in. You can't even see much. The interior light is shining down a touch i repositioned the light so now it's going to show the sub well once the carpet is on then it's going to light the carpet but good news as i expected um at the moment the sub is wired in series the two cores so in theory we are running on 8 ohm um, but we still have more than 300 watts running for it and there's this on level that it's it's not lacking anything really um so these are your undersea drivers and the dip that we had over there that we couldn't really do much with but not just that but now i yeah i listen to the front sub and everything is so clean and and, and with such an impact that yes the under seats were just not really able to deliver um so this is your front sub with no high pass filter and a low pass filter applied at 150. So there's healthy level, definitely very healthy level. I take those out. So this is when the car is completely sealed. Um, it it's kind of functional from 40, so we need the rear sub for the low end wobble, but it's very playful and clean. And we have pretty good level all the way up to. 85 a bit of a dip but other than that it's pretty good let's put a 112 north octave smoothing on it or we'll just take get out 148 so that is not a null point over there just a little bit of a dip but it plays all the way up very clean i think i just have to cut something on driver's side and put another one in for you mm, that would be cool <laughs> but um I did measurements, so that's with the trunk open. Because when you stand outside and you open the trunk, the front sub plays crazy bass at the low ends. But as soon as you shut it, that's gone. It's, that's the same in, in most of the cars. Um, and then I checked what it's like when you drop a driver's side window. It loses a bit of output there. And what it's like if I... Um, let's put this one sixth back. So this is when I drop passenger side window. That is very close to when it when the car is sealed. It has a bit of drop there and there. But the windows don't really affect much. So overall, as we wanted, it's it's all right there. Healthy level. Um, great kick. So I'm going to leave it here for now. And then Monday, I'm gonna tune the system to see how it really comes all together. So this is just a short piece to show you how the mid base, the front sub and the rear sub was tuned together, how they measured together. Um, the proper long version of this tuning video is gonna go on Patreon. So please go to the description. You can click on Patreon and you can see how you can sign up and then watch all the crazy really long videos and proper in-depth content um so mid-base so we had left mid-base passenger 
in our case because it's in UK. Um, as I crossed it higher now, it didn't have to play low where we had that problem between 60 and 90. It was crossed at 80. And yes, we had a dip on both sides, even in, in that range between like 120 and 150. But after the EQ job, I ended up getting this. I guess I had to drop those peaks and get something more even, which is more functional for getting a decent tune and then readjust the gains to get enough level um, for the mid and tweet pair. So from that, I had the bass pair. That's, hang on, let's put it one sec, it's moving on it. That's it. So that was the mid bass pair. And as, as I showed on the single pieces as well, where we had an acoustical problem between 120 and 150, it shows up on the pair as well. You just can't push enough EQ into it. There's no point to, to bring something back that's acoustically is a close to a null point or problematic area. But it's pretty functional now between the you know 80 and 170 with 24 dB slopes. And then um yeah, that's what the front front freeway was by readjusting the gains on the mid base to pull it up a little bit so we have enough level for the mid and weight. So this was the front sub. And it had really functional response where we needed it, but this is with the crossover now. It was crossed at 40 and 80 Hertz with 24 dB link, which really filters. Um, and then it had to be queued because from the target line, as you can see, that is just too much level and a peak and it would just boom, and that would make the lower mid-range really muddy over there. So we had to EQ it to the target line. And then when it was timed and bring it into phase, then they sum up, you get the rising level. Yes, over there, there's a bit of a scoop and it could be more linear, but that's when the mid-base plays a role that the mid-base cannot bring the target line which should look like that because we have that problem between 60 and 90 with the mid bass. That's when we would have perfect sum between mid bass and front sub if that was also working all right. But still, at least the front sub is playing that range and it brings it up and it's pretty decent now. But yeah, if it was out of phase, then that's what happens. You can see that everything just cancels out. Literally, there's no bass in the car in, in in that case so that's what we got for our front and then let's take all of this out because i had many measurements so we had mid tweet then we had the mid base so the freeway then the front sub and then full house with the rear sub and yes the rear sub is needed because on the 40 um, the front sub, there's no point to put that much EQ into it and force it to, to do something what the cabin doesn't help. Um, this 10 inch sub, if it was at the back of the trunk, it could play way lower. But from that given location, and that's what people always have to understand that, you know, what you hear is from a given location. It's not, not the driver that you hear, it's, it's the car, the room, the location, the application. The driver is, is, is just probably the smallest factor in the game. So after the rear sub was also crossed at 40, 24 dB, timed, in phase, bang, it just gives that extra low end and it's functional down to, you know, 30, 28. Yes, it's not a crazy IB sub that I build in many cars, but it definitely gives extra depth, which is needed. And they play beautifully together. The rear sub disappears and you hear everything from the top of the dash. So happy news. And also now the eights underneath the seat don't have to struggle that much. There's not that much energy going into them. Uh, so there's not that much rattle um, on high levels. The side seal doesn't want to, you know, come alive that much. And everything is just cleaner, tighter, more accurate. So it worked out pretty well. And of course, the big question still stands. What does it sound like? Right, everyone wants to know, Pete, how was this Focal sub in that application? 
I know what you want to hear. It was awesome. It was mind blowing. Brilliant. The best front sub ever. No. That's not what people have to understand and take away from this video. What you have to understand is that whatever you do in a car, in a, such a small room, it has such high effect on what you hear that the, that's why I always say the installation matters so much because how, how you install that driver, in what application, what box, is it a box, is it a sealed port, is it an IB? Um, it has to be right for the driver. This Focal, if anything, works really well in small sealed box. So that's great. If you have a small sealed box, this is a great driver for that. But what outcome we got in this car is, is rather due to the fact that the sub was put to the right location where it has the best chance to play the bandwidth where we actually need it to be integrated to the system. So, because it's, it's in that small box in that location, we could literally put in any 10 inch driver, which, which is fine according to the feel and small parameters to work in a small sealed box and the outcome would be very similar. It wouldn't be like day and night if you had a cheaper, anything like a, a cheaper line for cow or whatever else. You could use any, any 10 inch front sub and the outcome would be pretty similar once the install is solid and is tuned well. So, now I'm not going to, you know, brag about how good this driver is. That's not the point. Yes, it sounds great now, it ticks the boxes, but um, ultimately, again, installation, location, application. This is what people have to take away from this, right? Hopefully now, from this long video, everyone changed the perspective of this project a little bit more. Some of you are really well experienced and you've seen many videos from me or from your experience, you know that you don't necessarily need the most expensive drivers. In this case, the owner wanted to match the whole Focal Utopia range, so it made the best sense to, to get that driver for this, because otherwise he would feel, you know, later on that mm, I should have got that driver or I should upgrade. We just went for it straight away. So, you know, it's great for me as well because I don't have to work with shitty cheap drivers. It's, it's a great driver. But um, finally, you know, we could pull the system together the way it can work. Of course, people always try to, you know, take as little sacrifices as possible when it comes to modifying the car. And that's what we went with a few months ago. Um, he was hoping that we could get something fantastic out of it. But when you are chasing perfection, then there's a point when you have to realize that sacrifices have to be made. And we had to make that sacrifice to cut the carpet. Many people asked, you know, wow, how, how could you do that to the car? What are you going to do when the car has to be resold? And well, there are a few answers for this. First, as you could see from the very first shot when I showed when the carpet was cut out, I lined the cut in a way that if we have to put the same carpet piece back into place, it can be made pretty and you wouldn't see the cut because it's under the floor mat. So you could get away with it. And by the way, when you buy a car, what things do you look at? The carpet and then you walk away. You have to look at the engine, all the mechanics, the, you know, the gear and, and if if all those things are fine and the chassis is fine, then happy days. Of course, I wouldn't be happy to buy a car that was cut up inside, but if it looks presentable and it's fine, then what's the problem with it? Also, to the time the owner wants to sell this car in eight, 10 years time, we could just buy a whole new piece of front carpet because underneath the front seats, the carpet is split. And we could buy that from the breakers for peanuts and not we could change it, that's not an issue. So that was the second option. Third option, you could just leave the front sub box in there. You know, everyone everyone can appreciate good sound in the car. We could leave it in there, you know, change the system, put it back to Harman and Kardon speakers uh, with a simple DSP amplifier, wire everything back up, tune it, and it would be fine. It would just look fine, sound fine. And then the fourth option, well, there's a point when, I just say, you know what, 
believe once, right? So why do you really worry? Why do you worry about the consequences? Who knows what's going to happen next year or in five years time or maybe next week? Enjoy it. That's what I told to the owner as well. You know, when, when do you want to cut the car? In five years time when it's not that new? Cut it straight away. You know, I can make it pretty and it will sound good and you can enjoy it every day. But of course, yes, you need a person who you can trust, who does a good job. Otherwise, yes, it can be risky that someone makes damage in your car or it won't be right. But I said, I said it even back in, in November when we built the car that we needed the front sub. I was 100% sure about it. And that's the beautiful thing when I do all these crazy things um, in other cars, as well as, well, I all started in my car really, where I, I tried everything, pretty much everything in that car that you can imagine. So that gave me a knowledge and experience that no one can take away from me. And I can use that knowledge in customers' cars. I know how to get the best out of them. So here we are, long video. Um, I'm gonna share a uh, demo video separately, I hope. Um, I'm gonna take a bit of a footage. Again, it will be just a phone recording, nothing more, nothing less. I know that people wanna hear it, what it sounds like, just to get a bit of inspiration, um, see that sub moving. But uh, oh yeah, I wouldn't take that too seriously either. What matters is that now the system is, is pretty complete. Hopefully we don't have to do much else. Um, I had one more thing I had to fix in the car. I don't even know how I can share it uh, regarding sensitivity related problems between the mid and the tweeter in this Focal Utopia setup. Um, the tweeter is just so much more sensitive than the mid range or any other tweeter I've ever worked with that actually it's causing slight issues. Um, but hopefully I, I find a, a solution for that today as when now I'm recording this video. And um, if you want to see all that, I have so much more content about the projects I do, but I can't share everything. I just don't have time to do all this footage. This video probably took 25 shots and 25 videos, a lot of time to record it. Um, some parts of the videos had to be reshot several times, then I have to upload it, edit it. It's just a lot of time. But if you want to see more unedited content, really exclusive behind the scene content, then please go to Patreon, as I mentioned, it's, it's great people who have already signed up. I think that I have more than 40 people already who've signed up and support me. They love it. And, and they get something there where, you know, you can't see anywhere else. So I can, I can see the platform taking off and, and helping many people. So check it out. It's, you know, even if you can't afford it for long, just sign up for one month and, and watch the videos that I, I've got there so far. And then you will see that it's, it's a whole different experience. So this is it, guys. Hopefully you're still with me. Another long one, right? Comment if you've watched all of it and let me know what you think about this video, what you learned from it. And subscribe if you're not subscribed, because many people are not subscribed to this channel. I can see the stats. Um, and yeah, I bring the next one very soon. Take care.